Welcome back. The Minister of Transport, Rotimi Amichi, is our guest tonight on Hard Copy and he's been taking questions on his work as minister and also on the political situation in the country. Well, I'm going to ask you this one very quickly. Are you corrupt? I, is my honesty in doubt? I have told Nigerians, I repeat today to Nigerians, I'm not corrupt and that I don't like money. I'm not one swayed by money. I've lived a character that most Nigerians can tell you. I, I try as much as possible not to annoy God by saying I'm, I'm honest. But with all modesty, I'm an honest Nigerian. And there are very few honest Nigerians. Why do people keep having that impression? When did that impression start? Yes, so Wiki becomes the governor, takes documents from government house that people can't read. And say, oh, we sold gas turbines and we disappeared with the money. He set up a panel, a panel of inquiry, published the report. Do you think it comes from the fact that you led the campaign organization well, of to President no, 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 well, Then you talk about the, the PDP angle to eat. They are, they are bitter that we fought and led, <coughs> and led the movement against the former government and, the P, and PDP and were successful to have removed PDP in power. Ask yourself one question. Let me ask you this question again. If I was corrupt, why didn't uh, President uh, Goodluck prosecute me? The fight between Goodluck and River State government or myself lasted for two years. You, you were immune as a governor. Oh, for Christ's sake. You had immunity. For Christ's sake. Adamawa governor had immunity and they removed him. So, so, you, so it's about... Take the Adamawa one, for instance. They went after the, young, the innocent man for nothing. For nothing. They went after him. They were coming for me. They were coming for me. Even in the case of the Adamawa governor, they had no facts. The court, had, the court over, has overruled it or did not restore him as They the question, how is it that you were able to fund the 2015 presidential elections. Clap for yourself. You have evidence that I funded the 2015 election. You led the campaign. Leading the campaign does not mean you funded the election. So where did I'm you get DG. the funds from? You need to ask the Buhari campaign organization. There were contributions from everywhere. Everybody contributed. There were people. This is the woman who had to work to give Buhari her, her last savings. Nigerians wanted change. The level of corruption was very high. So Nigerians wanted to contribute to remove that government. Now, you know, Including you, I believe that Nigerians owe me a lot. In my, when I sit in my house, I believe that Nigerians owe me a lot. First, we saved this country from that level of corruption. Corruption where you see $50 million in, at Osborne Street. And those who shared in the corruption are busy dancing about it. Femi Fanekai Ode, when he was Minister of State, Minister of Aviation, Dr. Pito Dili's government gave him $2 billion naira to fix the, the wrong way. It's not there on the record of aviation. I'm the Minister of Transportation, I have that record. It's not there. He went away with the $2 billion naira. Are those allegations that you're making against him? I'm not making allegations. I'm saying statement of fact. I'm Minister for Transportation. Dr. Peter Dili, I was Governor of River State. In writing, cabinet approved, handed over $2 billion naira to Femi Fenekayode to fix the wrong way, River State, the wrong way at the Potako Airport. That was closed for two years. And Femi Fenekayode left with the money. Is that the kind of character I will speak to? That's not the kind of character. We're not on the same level. Will you make the facts available to us? Uh, tomorrow morning. As, as, you, as Minister for Transportation, I give you tomorrow, but there's no evidence anywhere in the Minister of Transportation to show that two billion naira was, was transferred by the Liberty government to, 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 to aviation to go and fix the airport. The man left with the money. Well, Minister Amici, I'm going to ask for that, you know, evidence of that uh, tomorrow morning. I said tomorrow morning. morning. Tomorrow Just morning come, I'll take, to, I'll take you to, to, uh, to aviation. Well, President Buhari's health is now a subject of controversy. And um, I'm sure that you'll be concerned as DG of his campaign, you know, for the 2015 elections. He's rarely seen him in public these days. But his aides say that he's recovering, he's, he's doing okay, and he shouldn't be ruled out for the 2019 elections. Is this something that you're optimistic of? Of course. If you watch the president, the first day he came back to now, you'll see that there's a huge improvement. In terms of the weight he has regained, begin to regain his weight and all that. And I tell you, Nigerians, you see, this is a 74-year-old man. He's no longer a 58-year-old man. He's no longer 50. He's not like a, a very young man. Now, what should, be, what should concern Nigeria is whether he provides good leadership. That's what should concern Nigerians. Does he, has he kept to his campaign promises? He made three. The rest, all the, the rest since you're hearing that, all propaganda, social media propaganda, said that I will fight insurgency, especially Boko Haram. That he has done successfully. That he has done successfully. He said he would improve on the economy. Right? 
and I think, uh, which is the other one? It's like about sec unemployment. Okay, so let's take the one after the other. We got into the country, uh, we got into government, the economy collapsed. The economy collapsed because of the total stealing. Nobody remembers that the president could even move into the, into the presidential lodge. There was literally no money to even run this government. Nobody could remember that he did not even form cabinet on time because he was looking, where do you even get the money to run government? Where do you get the money to even pay, pay uh, ministers? I'm asking you very quickly and very upfrontly, if you were to run in 2019, is this something you would advise? I would advise that he should. Despite his age and the medical issue he's been through in the last he's couple a, of weeks. He's a human weeks, being. Every human being fall ill. Maokbe, you fall ill, I fall ill. Every human being. You're not God. Nobody, nobody decides how well you are. But the president is fit enough to govern. And if he makes that decision to run in 2019, if he does, I don't think there's anything wrong in supporting him. So just let's quickly clarify this. When you said that um, Mr. Peter Odili, then governor of River State, you know, signed off 2 billion naira for River As River State government contribution to the construction of the runway that had collapsed in at the Port International Airport. Was it to the Ministry of Aviation? Yes. Not to Mr. Femi Fanica Odili? No, 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 to the Ministry of Aviation. And the man picked it and ran away. Is that the person I should speak to? You know, this is not the first time China says that me about Femi Fanikayode. He's not a character for me to talk about. People should stop asking me about him. We spoke with the former Minister for Aviation, Mr. Femi Fanikayode, and this is what he had to say about the allegation that he ran off with two billion naira river state contribution meant for the construction of the Port Hackett runway. This is an absurd allegation. First and foremost, we were given, I wasn't given any money by River State Government. It was my predecessor in office that was given a loan by River State Government. And the money was not paid to aviation, it was paid to FAN. It was a loan by, you know, by, uh, from the River State Government to FAN, as I understand it. The amount was 2 billion naira. Professor Boris Adi was minister at the time, not me. And the money wasn't paid to the ministry. It was paid to FAN, to the FAN account. That is number one. Secondly, when the money was paid to FAN, FAN spent about 350 million naira out of it before I even became minister. That is, Boris Adi authorized that expenditure on the Port Harcourt runway. By the time I got into office, there was 1.6 billion naira of that money left in the FAN account. They told me about it. And what did we do with the money? We gave Julius Berger, and they're still alive and well, 1.5 billion out of that money. It's in my records. We paid them the money. Uh, they did the work. That was 50% payment up front for the uh, airport runway. The airport runway was completed before I left office. It was commissioned about a month after we left office by Dezani, uh, Alison Madriki, my successor in office. And we left 132 million naira in the fan account for my uh, successor in office, who again was Dezani, and then later Felix Hyatt. The records are there. So when he says... I was given, there's no evidence of payment to the ministry. It's quite possible that he hasn't accepted the fact or recognized the fact that no money was paid to the ministry by the River State Government. Dr. Audley is still alive. They should ask him. It was paid to FAD. Was it part of the allegations that uh, you faced with the EFCC? Every, that's a good question. Every aspect of this, uh, of my tenure in office throughout the time when we left, that is for, what, about a year or two before I was prosecuted for seven years. This was investigated, not just by the FCC. If you remember, there was a public hearing by the Senate, and I had to come up with all the facts and figures. My predecessor in office was there. My successor in office, everybody was there. We all had to account for what we did. And every penny that I was given as Minister of Aviation, I was given 11 billion naira for various projects. I spent 3.8 billion naira. I accounted for every penny, and I left 7.2 billion naira in the ministry's account from the intervention fund for my successor in office. Why was it controversial then? Well, it was controversial because of the kind of absurd allegations that people like Rutmi Amici and others made. And at the end of the day, there was absolutely nothing. If you remember, all charges against me on the intervention fund were thrown out. I wasn't prosecuted for anything to do with aviation. And what they prosecuted me for, we went at it for seven years and I, eventually, I was eventually acquitted. It had nothing to do with aviation. So do you intend to sue him then? Of, of course I'm going to sue him. I've consulted my lawyers. What he has said makes no sense. It is nonsensical. It is reflective of his diseased mind, like I said earlier. And I'm waiting for him. And he'll be hearing from my lawyers as early as Tuesday next week.
That's the program tonight. Thank you for your mails and all your tweets in our last edition of Hard Copy. You too can send us your thoughts on the program. Our address, hardcopy at channelstv.com and our Twitter handle is at CTV Hard Copy. Thank you for watching. I'm Maupe Ogun. See you next week. Thank you.